Howdy folks, and welcome to World of Warships with the Mighty Jingles. Usual disclaimers apply right at the start of this video. This is not a review, this is just alpha footage. All of this is subject to change, it is not representative of the final gameplay. Although, I have to say, I do hope it's going to be representative of the final gameplay, because what we have in this alpha test version of World of Warships is nothing short of spectacularly good. I may as well get my cards right out on the table, right at the start of this video, I think this game is fantastic, even at this early stage of development. I really struggled to find anything bad to say about World of Warships, and trust me, I tried. So what is World of Warships? Now a lot of people are expecting this game to just be World of Tanks with ships, and that would have been the easy option, but that's not what they've done. There are going to be obvious similarities between the two games, particularly as far as the interface is concerned, but it's a very, very different game from what you might be expecting. To begin with, we're going to take a look at the tech trees, just to show you the kind of vessels that are available in the game. There are four different classes of ship available in World of Warships, but for the purposes of the Alpha Weekend test, only three classes of ships are available to the two nations, the Imperial Japanese Navy and the US Navy. The game has destroyers, cruisers, battleships and aircraft carriers. Right now, the Imperial Japanese Navy get the battleships, and the US Navy gets the aircraft carriers. When the game is shipped for final release, uh, all of the navies in the game will have access to all four of the different classes of vessel. So, four different classes of ship in the game. What exactly do they do? What are the differences? Well, taking a look at destroyers, let's have a look at the USS Benson. This is a Tier 8 American destroyer. Destroyers tend to be very small, very fast, very maneuverable, very cheap. Um, very easy to kill if you can hit them, but very difficult to hit in the first place because of their agility and they carry a very nasty punch in the shape of these torpedo launchers. If a destroyer manages to close undetected with your main force and launch a spread of these torpedoes, they can cause significant problems for ships of any size. Cruisers. Cruisers tend to be the jack-of-all-trades ship class in World of Warships. They are generally pretty good at just about everything, but their big Achilles heel is their lack of armor. They are well armed, they are reasonably quick, reasonably maneuverable. Some of them have torpedo launchers. Some of them can launch aircraft. Almost all of them have very, very strong anti-aircraft capabilities. Lots and lots and lots of anti-aircraft batteries. They can make life very difficult for the aircraft carriers on the enemy team when they're trying to get in and sink your battleships. And speaking of battleships, this is the Yamato. It's the tier 10 Japanese battleship and battleships are all about lots and lots of very big guns and lots and lots of armor. The main batteries of the Yamato for example are 460 millimeter guns in triple mounted turrets. It's got nine of those guns. The secondary armament, look at that. <laughs> the secondary armament of a Yamato class battleship is bigger than the primary armament of most of the cruisers. There is nothing subtle about battleships whatsoever. These things are absolute monsters in gunnery duels. And then of course we have the aircraft carriers. Aircraft carriers don't have a lot of armour. They're not particularly well armed but what they do have is lots and lots and lots of carrier-borne aircraft. Fighters, dive bombers, torpedo bombers. The aircraft carriers are the long-range striking arm of your fleet. So that is pretty much the basics of World of Warships. None of which of course explains why I'm getting so worked up about this game. For that I'm going to have to actually show you the whole thing in action. So strap yourselves in and stand by, we're going to go and play some World of Warships. So four different classes of ship in the game. Destroyers, cruisers, battleships and aircraft carriers. This is the Koachi. It's the first of the Japanese battleships. It's uh, Tier 3. It was launched in 1910. It's a dreadnought. Battleships are all about big guns and lots of armour. There is absolutely nothing subtle about a battleship. The dreadnought battleships, being the earliest class of battleships in World of Warships, well, back when these things were built, nobody would ever have dreamed that a puny aircraft could pose any kind of threat to a battleship. So the anti-aircraft armament on these things is all but non-existent. They are very, very, very vulnerable, very juicy targets for aircraft carriers. 
there is a certain element of rock, paper, scissors going on in World of Warships, but it's not nearly as pronounced or as straightforward as you might first imagine. At its most basic, you could say, aircraft carriers beat battleships, battleships beat cruisers, and cruisers beat destroyers. And there's an element of truth to that, but in practice, it very rarely actually works out that way. How good you are at driving the class of ship that you're in control of is a far, far bigger factor than what class of ship you're driving. It doesn't matter that you're in a battleship. If you're no good at driving that battleship, a guy in a destroyer is going to run rings around you and he's going to take you apart with torpedo salvos. Destroyers, despite being the smallest ship in the game, have a number of very, very useful features. First, they can lay smoke screens, which is what you can see happening just up ahead. Now, anybody in that smoke screen is not going to be detected. As long as he doesn't fire his guns. <laughs> Uh, and that's why I am able to put some devastating fire into that. Because he's firing his guns, so he's losing the cover that uh, his destroyers and he's about to get hit by a torpedo salvo. Oh, that's going to leave a mark. And he's on fire, he's in all kinds of trouble. There's more torpedoes going in. I've lost him in the smoke, so time to switch to another target. There's torpedoes going all over the place here. Oh, somebody's actually shooting at me. We can't have that. The target over there. Now that's a destroyer. And that is... I mean, if I had nothing else to shoot at, I'll shoot at a destroyer while I'm at the controls of a battleship. But battleships are just not very good at taking out destroyers. Their guns don't reload and fire fast enough. Cruisers are very good at chasing down and killing uh, these little destroyers. Instead, I'm going to use my main battery guns and fire some nice, big, fat, juicy broadsides into that enemy battleship right there. While I'm reloading the guns, uh, let's just take a look at the UI. Down at the bottom of the screen you can see two different choices of ammunition, armor piercing and high explosive. And that guy looks like he's about to run aground, which is going to leave him a sitting duck if I can get these bloody guns reloaded. Yep, he's just run aground. <laughs> Sucks to be you. Oh, he's firing at me. I've hit him again. And there's some critical damage scored there. Uh, I've taken minor damage. It's no problem. Battleships, they're all about the big guns and the armour. I can get these guns reloaded. And I'm firing armour piercing because it's a battleship. It's heavily armoured. Took another hit, but it's minor damage. Oh, I'm on fire. I use my damage control parties to put the fire out. Guns are about to reload. Come on. I'm taking fire from my uh, starboard quarter but it's minor damage again there there we go guns up and i just sunk me a battleship which is nice Enemy battleship sunk. my uh, gunnery officer stating the obvious there now there's one other icon at the bottom of the screen that we haven't looked at yet and you'll notice that these things are all on reload timers they're not consumables like for example repair kits or first aid kits or fire extinguishers that you get in world of tanks these things are on reload timers. You can reuse them. So, so I've already used my damage control parties, and they're now on cooldown, but I'll have them back soon enough. And when I used it, it extinguished the fire that was burning inside my ship before it got out of control and did too much damage. That will also stop any flooding. It will also repair any damaged equipment. If any gun turrets get knocked out, or if your rudder gets jammed, or if your propulsion system gets taken out, it's a, it's a general all-round fix everything button but what it doesn't do is replenish the health of your ship and that's where the fourth and final icon down there at the bottom of the screen comes in and it's something that's only available to battleships i can use that cooldown to replenish my ship's health bar shot out whoa i think i hit his magazine <laughs> did you see that explosion so, battleships get the ability to replenish their health bars, and it's while it's not really a consumable, there are a limited number of uses. I think it's limited to four shots, and I'm going to have to use one of them in a moment, because while I was busy laughing my ass off at blowing up that other cruiser, and then switching my main batteries to this guy, I didn't realise he'd launched a spread of torpedoes at me, and... Well, you see how much damage a torpedo can do, even to a heavily armoured ship like a battleship so I am going to take advantage of that battleship ability and start getting some repairs underway. Now you saw how much damage one torpedo did to me 
And bear in mind that destroyers, even though they're the smallest ships in the game, destroyers are armed to the teeth with torpedo launchers. And so they can pose a significant threat even to a massively armoured ship like the one I'm driving. The thing about battleships is they do have massively powerful guns, but the turrets turn slowly and they have very long reloads. And small, agile, manoeuvrable, fast targets like destroyers are very, very hard for battleships to hit. If I can hit a destroyer, I'm going to cause all kinds of trouble for him. But actually getting the shot to land on a, something as small as a destroyer when they're manoeuvring quickly is very, very, very difficult. You'll often see novice battleship skippers getting themselves into problems because they think, oh, I'm in a battleship, I've got lots of armour, I've got big guns, nobody can hurt me. Come and have a go if you think you're hard enough. Torpedoes are the big equaliser. Destroyers can fire lots of torpedoes. Most of the cruisers can also fire lots of torpedoes. And of course the aircraft carriers can launch torpedo bombers. And nothing says torpedo me more than a novice battleship skipper who's gotten a bit overconfident and wandered away from the rest of his team and just made a big fat juicy target out of him. Oh jeez, that was a... Well, he's on fire. <laughs> See, this is what battleships are good for. Ripping stuff up with armour-piercing salvos from their main batteries. That guy can't last much longer. It's even at the moment, though. We're four ships each. But he's on fire. Oh, he's returning fire. I took a big hit there. I am going to... My repairs are going to be up very, very soon. I will definitely be using them. Another good hit. And I'm not the only one shooting at him. But again, you know... Separated from the rest of his team. He's got no backup. Come on, get those repairs up. <laughs> I really don't want to die here. Get those guns reloaded. Come on. He's fired another salvo. He, yeah, I don't think he's got that many operational gun turrets left. Come on. Come on. Jingles, use the repairs. <laughs> Jingles, your repairs are back up. I've set him on fire again. Well, I know that he's just used his damage repair parties because the fire went out. And he's taken all kinds of hits. So this fire is going to keep burning. Damn it. Managed to straddle him with that salvo. One landed short. One landed long. He's hitting me. He's hitting me. Jingles, use your repairs, Jingles. <laughs> what? Jingles, what are you doing? Tunnel vision, Jingles. Use your repairs. Damn it, he's hit me again, but minor damage. And nothing critical here. All my systems are still functioning. There we go. Jingles remembered to use his repairs. Hey, <laughs> which is just as well. Oh no, he missed. He's still burning. I'm going to get my main batteries back up any second now. Come on. Come on. I'm going to get a shot in before he gets around the headland and out of uh, line of fire. There we go. That's got to get him. That's got. Yes, we got him. Right. Well, we needed that kill. Ah, I'm being shot at. This is not good. It's not amazingly accurate. Looks like a cruiser. I don't know by the speed he's moving at. I'm going to attempt because I don't have a lot of health left here. And he's directly astern of me. He's turning around to give me a broadside. I can only fire at him with my rear gun battery. I'm not going to make it around the headland and outline of sight, but I'm turning the ship around so my unused guns on the other side can... Oh! <laughs> broadside. <laughs> Kill number four. Check me out. Um, so, yeah, I think we've probably got this one in the bag by now. There's only one enemy ship left. Well... While we're hunting down and killing that last enemy cruiser, I just want to draw your attention to something that really spells out why this game is completely different from World of Tanks. Have a look at the top right corner of the screen. You can see a bunch of metal ribbons, and they're a sort of in-game achievement tracker. They keep track of things like the number of hits that you've scored on target, the number of ships you've sunk, the number of ships you've set on fire, the number of critical hits that you've scored, and citadel penetrations on the various different targets that you've been shooting at. Now the important thing to note up there is that at this stage of the game I've scored 45 hits on enemy ships and I've sunk four of them. 
Now, f four kills is actually pretty good in World of Warships, but it took 45 hits in order to do that. Ships of this kind of era, unlike modern warships, modern warships are designed to not get hit. They have all kinds of systems and countermeasures to reduce the chance that they're going to get hit in the first place. Warships of this era counted on being hit, and they were designed to take those hits and keep fighting. And I really do think that the World of Warships development team have done an outstanding job at capturing the feeling of that protracted, knock-down, drag-out, brutal, gunnery duel style of naval combat. It takes time to kill one of these ships, and it should take time to kill one of these ships, because they were designed to take a beating and keep fighting. It's entirely possible to lose a ship very, very quickly, if you're stupid, <laughs> and you go running off away from the rest of your team because you think you're going to outflank the enemy battleship squadron, and then you run straight into the enemy battleship squadron and you don't have an exit strategy. And that's entirely as it should be, but generally speaking, as long as you have at least a vague sense of, has that guy just run aground? I think he has. <laughs> He's doomed. There he goes. <laughs> so yes, that was a win. But yeah, um, nice little um, tier 3 battleship game there for you. Um, I do have a tier 5 battleship under my belt now, the Congo. Um, haven't had a game in the Congo quite as good as that. <laughs> that's why you're watching that one instead of my Congo matches. Yeah, there we go. Hey, that's the first time I ever made the top of the team list. Go Jingles, ruler of the sea. Um, so next up, we're going to have a look at the cruisers, and we're going to talk about how aircraft carriers work. In this match, we have one carrier, two battleships, four cruisers, and a destroyer. The enemy team have one destroyer, two cruisers, two battleships, and three aircraft carriers. I'm really glad I'm in a cruiser and not a battleship. This is an Omaha-class Tier 5 American cruiser. It's a really, really good ship. It's very, very fast. It will do around 36, to maybe 37 knots. It's very maneuverable. It can launch a scout plane. It has two triple torpedo launchers on the port and starboard side. The only downside to the Omaha class cruisers is that even for cruisers they were very very poorly armoured. You really don't want to get shot at by battleships like that when you're in one of these things. So my scout plane has spotted a battleship for me. Now if the battleship's alone I will risk continuing pushing up into the sea capture area because there's another battleship on my team following me in. But if he has a... Uh, uh, there's a cruiser with him. Yeah. And I've probably been spotted by now, and there are three aircraft carriers on the enemy team. Now, cruisers tend to have very strong... Oh my lord, look at all of those aircraft. Now, cruisers tend to have pretty good anti-aircraft armament. But that's a lot of aircraft, and the torpedo bombers in particular are absolutely deadly. Now, those guys are right at the extreme limit of my range. That shot is probably not going to hit them, but... That... I'm not entirely sure if it's a Congo or a Fuso. Probably has the range to hit me, so I'm getting the hell out of here. And there they go. Now, the initial target of at least one of those torpedo bomber squadrons appeared to be the battleship that's following me up here. There he is. Yeah, wow. Now, he's maneuvering well, and I think only one of those torpedoes hit him, but... You don't want to get hit by torpedoes when you're playing this game, because it really, really hurts. He's taking significant damage. And that, of course, is what enables destroyers to remain competitive despite their small size. They carry lots of torpedoes. There's some fire coming in, but I think it's going to fall short. Or I hope it's going to fall short. It fell short. <laughs> Right, I'm, I'm going to make myself scarce. That is far too much firepower for uh, an Omaha-class cruiser to handle. I'll take some pot shots at that enemy cruiser as he heads into the smoke screen. I'm not quite sure whose smoke screen that is. And I've lost him. There you go, smoke screen in action laid by one of the destroyers. So I'm going to... I'm going to take the long way around. <laughs> the thing is... Aircraft carriers, a lot of people make the mistake of thinking that aircraft carriers in World of Warships are just like artillery in World of Tanks. They're not. They're completely different. 
it's not like World of Tanks, where you're sailing along. <laughs> I've been playing far too much World of Warships lately. It's not like World of Tanks, where you're driving along, minding your own business in your IS-7, and then suddenly, boom, you're dead. You just got hit by an armor-piercing shell from a T-92. You didn't even see it coming, and your tank's gone in one shot. That just doesn't happen in World of Warships. I haven't played aircraft carriers myself yet. That's next on my to-do list, but... Aircraft carriers get to choose the loadout of the squadrons that they embark on board their ships. And I really, really hope that the aircraft carrier on our team... Oh god, we've already lost two ships. That the aircraft carrier on our team has gone with an extensive fighter squadron loadout. Because that's a lot of torpedo bombers <laughs> and dive bombers uh, pummeling our squadron from the air. The thing about torpedo bombers is they're dangerous. They are very, very dangerous. But they're only really dangerous if you're not paying attention. Again, it's not like artillery in World of Tanks. In order for an aircraft carrier to pose a significant threat to you, you have to not be paying attention. You have to be in tunnel vision mode, in, in this gun sight view, and not paying attention to the warnings. You can see I'm getting indicators popping up on screen there, letting me know that aircraft have been spotted. So while I'm shooting at this battleship, and he is still not shooting at me, which is fantastic news, he's firing at this uh, friendly battleship with me, you can see there, torpedo bombers are coming in, and there's a spread of torpedoes in the water. Fortunately, that battleship took the hits for me, so I didn't have to manoeuvre to avoid those torpedoes. Bad news for the battleship, of course. He has taken one hell of a pasting. More torpedoes coming in, but again, they're aimed at that battleship, and he has managed to... Yes, he's managed to slow just in time to avoid them. I've launched a spread of torpedoes myself. I'm not actually anticipating hitting anything with them, but the fact that there is torpedoes in the water is going to make those battleships start to manoeuvre, and that's going to throw their aim off. More torpedoes in the water... We've managed to shoot down one of the enemy fighters. Am I going to get a shot off before that guy clears the headland? Yeah, I think I am. So I have largely managed to escape the attentions of the enemy team so far. They must have been concentrating on that very unfortunate battleship with me. If they hadn't, I would have just had to get the hell out of here. I cannot stand up to an armor-piercing main battery barrage from a tier 6 battleship. Well, the team's ahead on points because I've capped C, and oh, 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 I found one of their flat tops. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, I am all alone out at this end of the map, however. Um, that other battleship that was with me has just died. We've just lost another ship. But the enemy battleship has run off. I'm now switching to high explosive ammunition. Aircraft carriers are not particularly well armoured, so my high explosive ammunition is really going to mess his shit up. There goes my first HE salvo, and it, the range looks good, it's on target, and he's on fire. <laughs> However, I definitely now have his undivided attention. And I got a bit carried away here, because this is the first time I've actually got my sights on an enemy aircraft carrier, and boom. Dive bombers. It's not like you've suddenly broken through the enemy lines in World of Tanks in a fast medium and you've found the enemy artillery. These things can fight back. They take a lot of damage when you start shooting at them, but they're not completely defenseless. He is now launching absolutely everything at me. Torpedo bombers. Ah, oh, crap. So, first the dive bombers, then one squadron of torpedo bombers, and I took two torpedo hits there. I wasn't paying attention. The indicators are popping up on screen, letting me know what direction aircraft are coming in from, but I'm just focused on nailing this aircraft carrier. And I've set him on fire again, so that this is good. He's now on fire in two different locations. But he's launching. He's launching. Ah, no, leave me alone. Stop shooting at me. <laughs> oh, more torpedo bombers. Oh, no, this is not good. And, oh, come on, turn, turn. Use the false jingles. Do not hit me. Yes! <laughs> How close was that? And he's still burning. Um, 
but he's not out of it yet. He's still got a couple of squadrons he can launch at me. He's recovered his aircraft. There goes the first squadron of torpedo bombers. And he's... Uh, I don't know how he can launch anything with his flight deck on fire like that, but... Yeah, it's not supposed to be a simulator, I suppose. And I keep scoring hits on this guy, but it was the flooding caused by that first torpedo hit that basically finished me off. I took on too much water, I couldn't get the damage control party uh, consumable back up in time, and that was my game over. I gave him a fearsome pounding, but I just couldn't, I just couldn't close the deal. <laughs> so there goes the USS Omaha, down to Davy Jones' locker. I really do love this game. I've had some fantastic matches. I've had some utterly disastrous matches as well. And, but most of the problems that I've had with the game haven't been the fault of the game. They've been the fault of the people playing it. You know, I've been shot up by my own team just because, oh look, it's Jingles. That's not a problem with World of Warships. That's a problem with World of Warships players. This is a fantastically good game. One of the other features, which I'm going to close with is once your ship has been knocked out you can go into spectator mode like look at this look at this destroyer go you can press control G to switch the interface off and just just bathe in the eye candy oh dive bomber strike he's closing in to finish off the carrier that nailed me and he's doing a really really good job of it look at the anti-aircraft armament on this little thing this was a very very good destroyer skipper so we're going to end this video off with um, some eye candy in the spectator mode with the interface turned off and just bathing in the beauty of World of Warships. I really do think that Wargaming has an absolute corker of a game with World of Warships. It is, I just can't think of a single bad thing to say about it. Trust me, I tried. I thought, Jingles, you have to give a balanced preview. <laughs> you can't just go on and on about how good this game is. Ah, screw it. <laughs> it is what it is. It's a great game. I'm not just going to make bad stuff up about it just for the sake of pleasing everybody on YouTube. I think this game is utterly fantastic. And it's just in alpha. <laughs> All they have to do from this point on to have a winner on their hands is not screw with it. <laughs> and, and, you know, they, they, they're just laughing all the way to the bank. And, and I hope it does well, because it really, really does deserve to. I think this game is amazing. So, hope you've enjoyed the video so far. We're going to finish off with some suitably epic music. And, uh, and just enjoy the eye candy in World of Warships from Wargaming.net. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Take care.